where would you like to start? I grew up as a young kid in a place called Alexandria, Louisiana. And I live in a very small community, a three-room house, and I have 12 brothers and sisters, so there's 13 of us in, in, in most abject poverty that you can imagine. There was this work program at a school called Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And my mother and my high school football coach, who thought that I was a very good student who had simply not applied himself appropriately, urged me to go to work in a program whereby during the summer prior to the regular semester, you'd work on campus and ultimately um, you would try to get enough money to help pay for room and board for the school year. And so I went there. I asked them to participate in the program, and they rejected me. And uh, I came back throughout the day literally four times begging and pleading to get in the program. And they rejected me. In fact, they rejected me the last time, but then they called me back and said, listen, you can't get in the regular program, but what we can do, uh, our outside maintenance crew needs some help and support working with them. If you're willing to work with them, uh, I can ask maybe the head of the dormitory of life on the campus to try to get you in one of the dormitories and we'll give you some of the benefits as though you were in the program. But you're really not in the program. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's what I did all summer. All summer picking up the trash and cutting the grass around the university campus. And somehow I made the decision that I didn't want to do that anymore. And that I want to try to do something better. And it came to me as a young 18-year-old kid that that's what I want to do. I'm going to now study. By the time I left school, I was president of all of my classes. And I ultimately became the student government president as well. Also, I was fascinated by the military. <laughs> So they had a very strong ROTC program in campus. And so I engaged in that fully. And by the time I got to the senior year at, uh, at the college, I was a distinguished military graduate. I was a commander of the entire ROTC brigade. At the same time, I was the student government president at the college. And I found myself, and if you know, going back to the 60s, the student government leaders were very active in the civil rights struggle. So I was very active in the civil rights struggle. March and protest, demonstration. I met people like Dr. King. I, I was engaged in all of those kinds of activities as a young student leader. At the same time, I'm the head of the ROTC Brigade, preparing to go to Vietnam. And it's one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Some days, I was out protesting as a student leader on civil rights matter against the war in Vietnam. As an officer, simultaneously, I'm preparing to go to Vietnam. And ultimately, I honored my military uh, position and went to Vietnam served in Vietnam, served for four years in the military, went all the way up to the rank of captain, and ultimately decided to get out. So that's how the two positions end up being simultaneously. First time that ever happened. I'm the brigade commander, I'm the head of the student government, and oftentimes those two positions are in conflict. I held both simultaneously. I think the, the main legacy will be uh, not one that he expected when he ran for office, but the international economy fell apart uh, right after he got elected. And so he has been and will be remembered as a great steward uh, through difficult times. Unfortunately, when I came aboard as county executive, it was in the midst of the recession. some of the worst
worst economic challenges for the county and also for our nation. We had a great recession, uh, huge uh, government shutdowns, sequestrations and budget changes. When you manage the budget well, it allows the flexibility to do so many other things that you want to do. Uh, but sometimes it gets down to the very simple kinds of things that we take for granted. A, it snows, we want the snow to move. We want it to move quickly, effectively, efficiently. Uh, we want great schools and we want good public service and we want a quality of life that I think most people envy for around the world. So speaking of a better quality of life, you're also um, creating some new communities. And one of them is um, Shady Grove Metro Area, mm -hmm. the fire training facility. How did these smart growth initiatives get started? Well, it's an interesting question because uh, I thought for a long time it wouldn't get started. And here's what I found. When I came county executive, we had a lot of age projects, age facilities in Montgomery County. And several of the places were around the Shady Grove Metro. Maintenance facilities, warehouses, right at the Metro doorstep. Some of the most valuable land that you could find, we had county property property that needed repair, property that was dilapidated, a property that in effect was a waste on the, our tax roll because this was productive land used by the government. And I said, well, I don't think that I want to repair those there. I would like to move all of those facilities and come up with a new plan. When I made this announcement to my own staff, about seven, eight people, they looked at me like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> we, we can't do that. You need to rethink this, Mr. Exactly. This is not a very good idea. And I sat there and, and really stunned that my staff was saying to me that this is not a good idea, we can't do this, and so forth. But I would not let it go. And later we hired a young lady by the name of Diane Jones, uh, who came aboard and I informed her of what I wanted to do. And she sat there and she said, I think that's a brilliant idea. Give me the opportunity to see whether or not I can implement it for it. I don't waste any time, let's get in the groove. Come on now, baby, let's move, move, move. We are right now standing hundreds of feet from the entrance to the Shady Grove Metro Station. And over a period of time, over a couple of years, she has implemented virtually every aspect of that. We have uh, 17,000 feet of retail in this building. We've announced Starbucks as sort of our first tenant uh, with a nail salon uh, as our second tenant and a bunch more retail announcements are sort of around the corner. So it's, uh, it's a great new modern building with a great metro location in the heart of a new neighborhood. It's pretty unique. It was a Herculean task and one that I'm very proud of, but uh, it was very difficult because it, my staff thought it was a terrible idea, but I get the final say, so, <laughs> so <you laughs> I, I proceeded anyway. You know. <laughs> well, I got the car, got a lot of money. Come on, the baby, let's have some fun. Hey, baby, come on over here and let's go pop in the night. Well, I be boppin', baby. She might be boppin', baby. Well, I'm always lovin', I'll always be free to ride. You really want somebody who's calm, steady, informed, um, with good judgment in a time with uh, just crazy bad economic things happening, with difficult budget cuts to be made. Uh, somebody who's not playing politics, somebody who's looking out for the, the public. And that's what we had in Ike Lake. And that will be uh, the main uh, legacy and uh, in the social service area. Um, with all those cuts that he had to make, uh, he preserved the social safety net. And uh, that was extraordinary to those of us who sat and watched and saw how bad the economy was. No fault of the county executive. This was international economics and, and crazy national policies that led to, to that deep, deep recession. And he got us through that, and he preserved the safety net. I got a voice. I love to sing. When I was running for a county executive, I said that I wanted to make sure that everyone in Montgomery County would have a seat at the table and a voice in the decisions that I would make as county executive. And as I would go throughout the county saying that, uh, people would nod and would, some would agree and they would, oh, that sounds like a good idea. 
Then finally, uh, a gentleman questioned me about this. He said, what do you mean? How can you have everyone with a seat at the table in the voice of the decisions that you make without literally pushing aside some of those who are already at the table? And I thought that was a pretty good, uh, a pretty good question. So my response was, well, I would simply build a larger table. Montgomery County Executive Isaiah Leggett and Gondar, Ethiopia Deputy Mayor Getanit Amara signed the county's second sister city agreement at a signing ceremony in Gondar. And so over the years, we've expanded Montgomery County's presence on three levels. One, from our cultural development in terms of the sister cities program, educationally through our college and through the public school system. Also signing the agreement were Montgomery College Senior Vice President for Student Services, Dr. Beverly Walker Grafea, and University of Gondar President, Dr. Mangisha Admasu. The two institutions of higher learning hope to establish an information sharing relationship and a student and faculty exchange program. And thirdly, through economic development. And we put all of those together in a package and we go literally abroad. And so we've been to uh, India, uh, where we have a sister city program in Hyderabad. Uh, we just returned recently from South Korea and we have a sister city program at Daejeon in South Korea. In Xi'an in China, we have a sister city program. In Gondor in Ethiopia and, and uh, El Salvador. All with the idea of literally taking Montgomery County to the world. So that deepens our ties with the world. It allows for greater opportunities for economic development, and we understand the cultures much better. So I'm delighted with the Sister City program, but most especially about the overall community partnership that we've developed over the years. You see the pride, the, the hope, the expectations of the people when you say, well, we've gone to Ethiopia, and we're going to look at some of the questions and issues on the African continent. When people hear that and they know that you're doing that, it encourages them to think, say, well, okay, the county really does it really, in fact, uh, values my culture, my language, my religion, and the things that we are doing. So effectively managing a diverse community is one of your great skills, and inclusiveness has been key. So what are your final thoughts for our audience tonight? Well, I, I think that uh, we have a great deal of promise and hope. Um, I know sometimes it's challenging. I'm very optimistic. Uh, I believe that there are so many assets and so many things that are right about our country that, unfortunately, we we have become fascinated and focused on some of the things that divide us. Uh, Montgomery County is an exceptional place, and I compare it to any other place in the world. This country is exceptional. I've, I've had the opportunity, a young kid who up until high school had never been more than 50 or 60 miles from a little town in Alexandria, Louisiana. I probably have now traveled around the world at least 10 times. Um, and I've seen a great deal around the world, uh, and there is not a place better, in my opinion, than this country. Uh, we have our faults, we have our challenges, but when you compare it to any other place in the world, uh, this is a place that I want to be and I want to help try to make it better. He's been very strong about affordable housing. Uh, housing so expensive, uh, and you want to make sure that you don't price out of your county uh, the backbone of your community, your teachers, your firefighters, your police, and, and that's a danger in a place like Montgomery County where housing is so expensive. And he has put in um, a great amount of money in our housing trust fund uh, to make sure that we're adding affordable units and making sure we just don't become uh, a place for millionaires and two lawyer families. I mean, that could happen in Montgomery County. And his uh, making affordable housing such a priority has been the key. In the work that we do in the Office of Community Partnership, uh, we feel that uh, his legacy of making Montgomery County one of the most welcoming communities in all of America uh, by having a, we have a Gilchrist Immigrant Resource Center uh, named after County Executive Charlie Gilchrist, our second county executive. And it serves uh, with volunteers, with nonprofits, uh, with a very small, amazing uh, staff. Uh, we 
serve thousands of immigrants who are trying to learn English, who are trying to learn about computers, who are taking classes on citizenship, who need information and referral. So the work that we've done in our office, we have uh, liaisons to the uh, African, to the African American, to the Latino, to the Asian, to the Middle Eastern uh, communities. And um, with that work, we, we, we've strengthened Montgomery County's commitment to being a welcoming community. We've brought, it's, it, it is our edge in the global marketplace of the 21st century that we have people here in Montgomery County who speak nearly every language and understand nearly every culture. I grew up here, it was a wonderful place to grow up, but it was way boring compared to the magnificent Montgomery County of today where people from every corner of the globe have come here. And so that uh, that is another great legacy of County Executive Ike Leggett is that he made sure we continued our welcoming policy. One of the other programs that you've really been instrumental with is MLK Junior Day. Mm -hmm. It begins in Silver Spring with different ways of celebrating Dr. King between the Alpha and the Omega. So would you share your concept of that? Well, what we try to do is make uh, MLK Day a day of service, uh, not a day to simply uh, go out and spend money on holiday gifts or whatever you may be doing. But uh, we try to make certain that people live up to the spirit, the core of what Dr. King meant, that is to bring people together, to tear down some of the walls that divide us in many ways. And so we emphasize uh, a variety of things around the community. Silver Spring is just one location. We also have the same thing in Bethesda and several other locations throughout the uh, county. And what we're trying to do is encourage people to come out to participate, understand and recognize what community service is about, and participate in some form of activities. And we have people competing against each other, and we have different organizations, sororities and fraternities that are out actively engaged in all of these activities. But it's a day of service, and we try to emphasize that. Uh, but it's a long day with a number of programs around the county built around service and we encourage especially young people to get them out and get them involved. And it seems like that program is growing every year with mm -hmm. more and more people coming out and doing acts of service. Well just to give an example in places like Silver Spring and the uh, 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 service center there at Silver Spring, at least the, the veteran center, uh, it is packed with hundreds of people. You go to the uh, a convention center here at, uh, uh, in, in Rockville, it is packed with thousands of people literally from wall to wall, all engaged in some form of community service. What a great concept. Oh yeah, yeah. My name is Della James and I am a volunteer and an employee for Community Ministries of Rockville. I love volunteering because I love giving back. Volunteers make such a great impact on the community. You encourage people, you help support nonprofits that really don't have enough funds to cover their general overhead. So those, non those volunteers allow the nonprofits to carry out their mission. We're community ministers of Rockville, we're one of them. Because of our volunteers, we're able to carry out our mission. So you are valuable. So when I look around and I see everyone here, I'm encouraged because I know these, these nonprofits, these organizations are now gonna be able to carry out their mission because of you. So volunteerism is very important because it allows us to achieve the goals to help the community within budget and within reason. So we need you, so I'm, I'm encouraged. Hi, I'm here volunteering today um, in honor of Martin Luther King. He gave a lot to our community, so I thought it would be a great thing to do to come out I have two kids, 10 and 12, and I thought it would be great for them to have this experience to come and give back to the community, so that's why we're here. <laughs> it's an amazing day. It's just so well organized and well run and just an amazing opportunity for all my kids of all different ages and their friends to come and not just volunteer today, but really see what's available in the community for them to get involved with. So we really appreciate all the effort that, that went into making this day happen. Okay, uh, my name is Samory Sen. Uh, I'm a student assistant at Montgomery College. Uh, today I am running two tables where we are making puzzles and cards for uh, children at a local hospital. Uh, just a little uplifting uh, service that we can do for everyone. Uh, never hurts to give back to the community. It's something that's been instituted in my family uh, that you don't live for yourself, you live for others. 
um, and especially getting back to children, what they see that is done to them will be reciprocated on the world of tomorrow. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing that we can do. Uh, hi, I'm Anya, and this is my friend Nikita, and we've um, we've been here before. Actually, we've volunteered at this place before, and it's a nice experience knowing just that something you do that takes up a few minutes of your time will eventually end up helping someone in the long run, and it's just a nice feeling knowing that somebody out there will appreciate um, your work. It's amazing to see what a hot meal can do for the soul when you've lost everything and you have not had a hot meal in days. Hi, my name is David Marks and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Operation Barbecue Relief. We're a 501c3 not-for-profit charity founded in May 2011 during the Joplin tornado disaster. We provide compassion, offer hope, and friendship to those whose lives have been affected by disasters across the United States. We leverage our God-given talents and expertise in competitive barbecue cooking as well as catering barbecue meals with our ability to quickly mobilize our teams into any area where disaster disrupts and tears apart the lives of Americans. Operation Barbecue Relief has provided over a million meals and spent 178 days deployed in disasters in 19 states. The thing that people think we all have in common is barbecue, and on the surface that is true. We provide hot barbecue meals to those in need and first responders. It's amazing to see what a hot meal can do for the soul when you've lost everything and you have not had a hot meal in days. Barbecue is comfort food. It reminds people of better times, friends, and family. The sustenance of that hot meal combined with the memories of better times give people hope and the ability to begin the healing process. Once you have worked in a deployment like our volunteers have, you learn that barbecue is the lever that binds us. However, the feeling you get providing someone in need that you will never know, who can never repay you, is the fuel that drives the volunteers of this organization. We are Operation Barbecue Relief. I work for Community Ministries of Rockville. We are a nonprofit that helps the local Rockville area. We have an elderly ministries program which helps the elderly stay in their home. We provide home care services, safe and available projects, so they can be independent as long as they can in the house. We also have two permanent resident houses, one for men and one for women. They allow those who are less fortunate to transition back to the community. Whenever they're ready, we guide them from whatever state they were, and so they can become more independent and start fresh and new. We also have a clinic, Man's Vacation Health Clinic, which helps the underinsured and non-insured in Montgomery County. That is one of our current and recent projects. We're very proud to offer that program to know those who don't have insurance or underinsured can get the medical care they need. And last but not least, we have our ESOL program, which is a language outreach program. And those who are struggling with English can learn English in a safe, helpful environment. We have currently four locations. We continue to grow and expand. We have a satellite class too. It's a great organization to work for. I'm proud to be part of the establishment for 12 years. And by volunteers, I'm gonna push it again. <laughs> you allow us to carry out our mission. Please go to our website, which is www.cmrocks.org. You can find out more about us and you'll see how we are trying to impact the community. Thank you so much.
our school sets it up, it's a yearly program. Uh, the first year I got into it, my friend wanted me to come, they needed some extra hands. She knew I was good at doing some labor type activities. So I showed up, loved it, and uh, I've been doing it every year since. We're uh, just here breaking up some concrete, trying to uh, prep the house uh, so they can put in a new foundation next week. It's always just a very gratifying experience, especially when I get to stay on the same project, get to watch it progress throughout the week, there's always people on hand who can help you learn. If you're not comfortable doing a particular task, it's fine. They just have you do something else. If anyone is looking for a one-of-a-kind experience, this is the absolute best place to do it. So I think Lazarus is a really unique opportunity, um, and it allows for student leaders to take an issue that they care a lot about and learn from already established leaders in the community on how to effectively serve the community. And what did you learn from your year as a Lazarus Fellow? So I learned a lot about making a vision and executing a plan and I learned a lot about leadership in general. It's not necessarily about promoting your own agenda but rather about working with other people and collaborating to work towards a common goal of making a positive impact in someone else's life. What was your favorite activity during the year? So my favorite activity was with Upward Enterprises and it was a ropes and team building course and it was really scary but really thrilling and I think it was worth it because I had never been ziplining at that point and just I remember that moment jumping off and just trusting whatever would happen would happen and it really showed me that in life you're only going to get the most success and the most happiness out of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. This project really allowed me to go outside of just my own bubble and understand other people and become empathetic towards others. And I also learned how to really push myself out of my comfort zone. So why and how should students get involved who are interested in this program? Lazarus offers students such a great opportunity to take the issues that they see every day and make a positive impact addressing these issues. Uh, and I think that it really transforms the way people perceive themselves, the world, and how they go about the rest of their lives. They have new connections and they know, they explore their passion uh, to help people who may not be from the same background as they are.